Sand is everywhere. In your eyes and mouth, in your hair, under your t-shirt, and in your shoes. You can hardly stand. The wind is so strong, it's Ow! knocking you down. Suddenly, an especially powerful gust sends you to the ground. You crawl toward the back door. It takes you a lot of effort just to pry it open. Once inside, you get to your feet and sneak a peek outside. Just clouds of dust and a deafening roar. Okay, it's time to call for help. It started a month ago. One day, you went out to the garden behind your house. It was a windy day. You even spotted a tiny tornado under your apple tree. It hardly reached your knee, lazily swirling around tree leaves and dust. You tried to make it disappear by poking it with your foot. But even after several attempts, the mini whirlwind just didn't want to break apart. You shrugged and went back home. The next day, the tornado was still there. And had it grown? Interestingly, instead of growing taller, it got wider. At that moment, it started munching on your flowering shrubs. You got curious and decided to keep track of this unusual phenomenon. You measured it every day and carefully wrote down all the information in a special notebook. Maybe later I'll write an article or even publish a book about my storm, you thought. One day, you got out of the house to find your favorite apple tree broken. You couldn't figure out how it happened. The storm still looked harmless and too weak to damage a rather large tree. But after this accident, you started asking yourself if not calling for help was the wrong thing to do. Apparently, it was, because just a month later, your mini storm has suddenly grown to twice its original size. It's unsafe to go outside now. It seems as if your house is in the middle of a real tornado. You can't see the sky behind a wall of dust and debris. Your garden is ruined, trees broken, bushes and shrubs pulled out of the ground and sent flying somewhere far away. You hear your doorbell ring. A group of scientists you invited has come to the rescue. You show them the garden with your personal natural disaster and enjoy their stunned silence. But after a couple of seconds of initial shock, they spring into action. Ignoring the howling wind, they start carrying inside different equipment. It looks very complicated. Your kitchen turns into the researcher's laboratory. You get informed that your house will be temporarily used by the scientists. You take your things to the smallest bedroom and watch the professionals work. Your kitchen is filled with beeping gadgets and devices covered in flickering lights. People in protective suits and lab coats scurry around. Surprisingly, they don't bump into each other. Neither do they create traffic jams. You bring the notes you've been taking and hand them to an elderly man in a white lab coat. He thanks you as if you've just given him the gift of his dreams. The next several days pass in a flurry of activity. The storm in your garden is growing. The scientists seem to get gloomier every time you see them. It's around 2 a.m. when something wakes you up. You blink your eyes open and realize the house is shaking. Your homegrown tornado must have gotten so big, it's reached the house. In the morning, several scientists pull you aside to tell you the unpleasant news. You have to move out. The storm is indeed growing. Soon, it'll wipe your house off the face of the earth. Nothing can be done. You're gaping at the people telling you to get out of your house. But where will you go? They tell you they're building an additional research lab not far from the place. It's important to be able to observe the storm in real time. Anyway, there's a spare room with everything you may need in that facility. Why don't you stay there for a while? It would also be convenient for the scientists. They may need you to answer the questions that appear during the process. You agree because you don't have any other choice. The researchers help you transport your stuff to your new accommodation. You walk around your house, saying goodbye to your favorite coffee table, your sofa, and your cozy bed. The scientists tell you that there's no time to move your furniture to another place. The next day, you wake up to the news that your home is gone. The storm gulped it down at around 4 a.m. Over the next few weeks, the grown-up whirlwind has swallowed two houses of your neighbors, the nearby forest, several abandoned cars, and a small flower store. It's now so big, it's coming close to a large lake several miles away from the town. People get evacuated. The authorities have announced a state of emergency. One day, you notice that scientists are talking in hushed voices. 
they look even more worried than usual. You corner one of them and try to find out the truth. Soon the scientist spills it. The researchers have got some evidence that confirms their worst fears. According to all their estimates, the storm that once started as a tiny tornado in your garden is going to grow into another great red spot. Only on Earth. Crimson colored clouds are spinning counterclockwise at an incredible speed. Beneath them, you can see vibrant hues of the largest planet in the solar system, the gas giant Jupiter. Those clouds are called the Great Red Spot. It's a colossal storm raging in the atmosphere of Jupiter. If you found yourself at the storm center, the winds would be rather calm there. But on the edges, the storm's speed can reach 425 miles per hour. That's twice the speed of the fastest and most severe hurricanes on Earth. Over the decades, the size of the red spot has been changing. Right now, it's 1.3 times as wide as our planet. The storm's roots go as deep as 200 miles into the planet's atmosphere. The average tropical cyclone on Earth usually stretches for no more than 9 miles from the bottom of the storm to its top. The unique phenomenon on Jupiter has existed for so long because the planet doesn't have a solid surface. It consists of layers of clouds made up of vapor, water ice, and ammonia. Underneath, there might be an ocean of liquid hydrogen. Our planet is solid, and hurricanes slow down and break apart once they go low enough to touch the surface. But the Great Red Spot has nowhere to make landfall. That's why it keeps raging. The scientist also tells you the most bizarre and alarming thing about the storm in your garden. Instead of growing weak and disappearing many weeks ago, it's not only still going, but it's also getting bigger and more powerful. Even the most experienced specialists can't explain this phenomenon. After analyzing it for days on end, they've come to the conclusion that it shouldn't have appeared on Earth. It's against the laws of nature. Interestingly, the storm's composition is a bit similar to that of the Great Red Spot. You're impressed, but still can't get why the researchers look so worried. It turns out that your once mini storm is likely to grow as large as that on Jupiter. But since Earth is way smaller than the colossal red spot, it's likely to swallow our planet whole. It'll grow and grow, wiping out towns and cities, forests and highways. At the same time, it'll become more powerful. People will have to leave their homes and get evacuated to relatively safe areas until there are no more safe areas left. This process will take years, but it'll still be too fast for people to prepare. There will be two ways to deal with this global problem. One of them is to colonize the moon or another planet, for example, Mars. But it's an incredibly long process, and the storm will conquer the entire planet before the first spacecraft with people leaves Earth. Or scientists may try to stop the hurricane. There's a technology called the sunglasses effect. Billions of tons of dense gas get pumped into the atmosphere. This gas absorbs sunlight and cools down ocean water, which is the engine of any hurricane. The researchers aren't sure if this method will work with your storm. It formed not over the ocean, but in your garden. 